my talk will be covering the some uh, interesting work we have been working on in the uh, ultraviolet light emitting devices, including LED laser lasers, as well as some photonic detect photo detecting material and devices, including the uh, photoelectrical chemical detector, which we have recently been working on. Uh, uh, by the way, my name is uh, Heidingson. I'm from University of Science and Technology of China in the School of Microelectronics. And uh, in today's talk, I will cover why we wanted to work on the gallium nitride and why it's important. And uh, I will uh, devote my time to the two types of interesting devices, which is uh, deep ultraviolet light emitting devices, as well as uh, um, photo detectors. This is a unique a uh, special type of photo detect. It's not like a solid state device, but it's more like a photoelectrical chemical type photo detect. And then I will conclude my talk. First of all, the gallium nitride. Uh, as you may know, the uh, silicon is become our major dominant uh, semiconductor. But there's another type of group of uh, um, semiconductor which is uh, gallium nitride or three, group three nitride which has been widely studied in the past uh, several decades. And because it has a direct band gap covering from near infrared to UV, and also can be doped both N-type and P-type. And also it is importantly can be grow on the heteroapetectural growth. For example, silicon, sapphire, silicon carbide, and so on. It's very cheap. And also they have very high thermal conductivity and the chemical resistance. And then, importantly, they are uh, environmental friendly materials and uh, at in in the nowadays, gallium nitride has been developed. This technology has been known for almost uh, several decades, and uh, it has been commercialized, including in the, for example, the blue solid state light emitting technology using the blue LED with the uh, red uh, white phosphorus, and also been used for developing different kinds of laser diode, and also in, it's very popular in the power electronics and uh, which can replace uh, or at least uh, to be supplement to the silicon based uh, technologies to be used in the space or in the high power uh, communication or high power electronics. And, and also uh, gamma nitride technology can also be used in many kinds of uh, uh, medical or the communication system. And in the military application also, it's very popular for for a lot of application in the radar and also so on and so forth. So it's very crucial and important technology and materials. Uh, I would say it's uh, incomparable with uh, uh, silicon technology, which uh, it's not like competing with silicon, but it's more supplementary technology to silicon technology. And uh, uh, one of the dominant or uh, outstanding feature of gamma nitrogen technology because it can emit light. So people can use it for the LED chips, uh, for example, in the blue LED chips. Uh, three Japanese professors has invented the blue LEDs and now it's commercialized and everywhere people can use energy efficient light emitting technology to replace old uh, bulk technology. So it was awarded the Nobel Prize in 2014. And uh, the blue LED has been commercialized. How about the the other band, for example, in the deep UV or the UV ultraviolet band, and it's still it's under development because efficiency is relatively low. So our research is focused on, and today in the lecture, uh, we wanted to deliver about the some progress made in the UV, uh, in the UV field, in the ultraviolet band. So uh, for the UV optoelectronics, we focus on three types of devices. One is uh, ultraviolet LED, ultraviolet laser out and ultraviolet photo detectors. And uh, for the why we wanted to work on the UV system or UV optoelectronics, because due to the high energy of the photons, people can be people can use the UV light to for medical applications and for the uh, for the bio related uh, analysis or sterilizations. And also in system level, people can use it for photolithography, can be used for space exploration and for also for industry use as well. So uh, we wanted to introduce two type of devices here. Uh, one is for light emitting diode and the laser diode, which we call emitting device. Another one is a detecting device, which is based on the photoelectrical chemical type. So uh, for those two type of devices in the UV field, there's many issues to be addressed, not only in the material wise, but also in the device level. 
So uh, the key issue issues we have to address is uh, how we're going to generate the different carriers, for example, electron hole pairs, and how we are going to control the electron hole pairs for more efficient light generation or for more efficient carrier uh, light detecting. Both are very critical for the UV uh, optoelectronics. And uh, our goal is to introduce novel uh, material growth techniques or to introduce different type of device fabrication technique to overcome at least to solve the uh, poor device performance right now and to try to improve them. So uh, in the next section, I will introduce our strategies to improve the deep UV light emitting devices. First of all, I want to further introduce why we wanted to work on the UV. Uh, particularly in the nowadays due to the pandemic issues and the people has globally we have suffered from the pandemic and due to the virus and so on we wanted to use the uv light to kill uh, the bacteria basically to break the dna structures due to uh, the high photon energy of uv light and thus the uv LEDs can be used for future and the global market can be tripled or um, for from now and, and, and it's still growing up quickly. And uh, uh, due to the pandemic, as we all know, the coronavirus and uh, the UV light can be used directly from various studies from global researchers and uh, people already discovered we can kill those bacteria by using the UV uh, light sources. So and we wanted to work on them because we wanted to replace the old, the, for example, alcohol, chemical, um, uh, uh, heat and, and so on to um, kill the bacteria. But what if we can replace the old uh, mercury based, which is toxic and short lifetime technology? And we wanted to use a very uh, environmental friendly and robust uh, so called UV LEDs to replace the mercury based lamp to, um, to uh, use the, in the, uh, for example, in the uh, pandemic to kill those bacteria and so on. So uh, the algan is the best material to be used for developing the UV LEDs and because of tunable band gap and it can be doped by uh, N-type and P-type and they are all direct band gap. The current issue is the EQE, the external coin efficiency of the UV, deep UV LED is still poor in comparison to the visible LEDs, the blue LED, so on. So what we wanted to overcome and to improve the device, the whole device structures here, we want to include improve the the, uh, the device internal quantum efficiency and electrical injection efficiency as well as light extraction efficiency. So basically, is we want to improve the overall wall product efficiency. So here we all go, and in our group, we have developed several technologies. For example, in the architectural growth mode, we introduce miscut sulfide substrate to improve the efficiency. Also, we introduce a hybrid pattern sulfide substrate. And secondly, from device level, we in, uh, in introduce microstructures LED device or inclined sidewalls or nanowire LEDs try to improve the efficiency. From device structures, we also wanted to introduce monolithic integrations of different type of devices on a single platform to improve the device. So now, then I will introduce one by one here. First of all, why the blue LED is so efficient, commercially available, because the indium and gallium atoms are more in the size, the atom size is significantly different. So uh, they naturally introduce a phase separation. Look at the quantum wells here. They, they naturally introduce a phase separation. So we have uh, artificially, we, we, we have the natural uh, carrier localization. So the carriers can be uh, sucked into these quantum wells and uh, cannot move around. So due to the localization of the carrier's efficiency, the radiative recombination is very high. As a result, uh, we can create a very high efficient blue LED. When it comes to the aluminum gallium nitride net, uh, materials, because the aluminum gallium nitride, aluminum and the gallium atoms, they, atoms, they have similar size. So we cannot form a, a natural, like in the blue LED, we can naturally form a uh, 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 composition in homogeneity or the fluctuations in the quantum well, but in the algae it cannot. You can look at the quantum well, it's very flat in a normal growth mode. But in our way, we introduce a miscut sapphire substrate, which can naturally create a fluctuation in the quantum wells. And the carriers can be highly localized in those quantum wells to, to be radiatively recombined. And as a result, efficiency is quite high. And as a result, what we can learn from the optical measurement, 
This device grow on the miscut sulfide substrate has very high quantum efficiency. We achieved one of the record high 92% IQE here. And we also improve the PL performance as well. So uh, that's one of the strategies how to how we can improve the LED efficiency by introducing the miscut sulfide. Then we introduce another way how we are going to extract more light out of the uh, sulfide substrate. So we here, we introduce a pattern sapphire substrate, but pattern sapphire substrate has been widely used in commercial LEDs already. What's novel here? So look at the structure we introduced here is we combine a silicon oxide plus aluminum oxide here. It's not just the pure sapphire. It's already been, we form a, a, a combination of the patterned aluminum oxide plus a silicon oxide due to the refractive index contrast between the gamma nitride and the silicon oxide, we have more light can be extracted because of the introduction of the hybrid pattern sulfide substrate and the more light being escaped out and thus the LEE, the light extraction efficiency can be improved. The output power here, we show that the red curve indicating the LED using the hybrid sulfide substrate, the efficiency is quite high and the regular LED using the nano pattern sapphire substrate is lower. So what we learn from here is by introducing such a unique hybrid uh, silicon oxide plus LED structures uh, or uh, plus the sapphire substrates, we are able to extract more light out of the device. As a result, the power is much higher than the regular LED. The second part I want to introduce, the, we introduce a micro scale device uh, try to improve the light performance. And here, what we have done is we fabricate the different scales of the LEDs from 300 micron size in diameter to 20 micron size in diameter. And we found that mm -hmm. the device with the smaller diameter, like in the green curve shows here, we have much higher current density and we have much higher uh, light output power and we have higher EQE here at high current injection. So overall, the EQA performance by using the DPOV micro device size can be significantly improved. And the next is our uh, micro LED has very sensitive in the edge to the light emitting uh, uh, to extract more light. So we studied what's the uh, sidewall angle is more appropriate. So what we have done is we found that in class sidewall can enlarge the EQE and also the EQ improvement by adopting an inclined side wall can be more outstanding as the size trip goes very too small. So here what we learned that the, uh, the side wall angle has to be optimized. It's not like you can put the random side wall here. We need to put a few like a 35 degree has the highest uh, EQE perform LEQE uh, light extraction efficiency. And from the simulation, uh, FDTD simulation, we learned that indeed the angles can determine the light extraction efficiency and uh, from optimized uh, sidewall angle in the range of 25 to 35, it's more beneficial for light extraction. And also we introduce uh, nanowire structures. So the nanowire naturally, it can be used for extraction more light out of the device because the nanowires has uh, uh, nano structures and naturally introduce uh, better than the thin film structure to extract light. So what we have developed is develop uh, aluminum gamma nitride nanowires on silicon sub silicon substrate and then fabricate the device. What we learned that uh, the nanowire with the surface preservation technology can improve the light output power. Meanwhile, the nanowire shows the so-called droop-free de behavior. Basically, at high gel current injection, the EQE still didn't drop. This improved demonstrates that the nanowire has good performance or a future opportunity for us to improve the overcome the droop issues in the LED structures. And the last thing I want to discuss the device structure optimization. So what we have done is the uh, normally the light is coming going to the backside to be extracted from the south eye side. So the P gain side will also be uh, affected by those. Uh, 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 because the PGAN has a, a smaller band gap and it can absorb the UV light. So what we have done is we introduce a photo detector here to absorb wasted photons coming from this side and then regenerate electron hole pairs and then re uh, inject into the active region to improve the light 
extraction efficiency. If you are, you are interested in this technology, we can refer to these publications. And eventually we found that our light performance from the integrated device can be significantly improved from the only 0.3% to 21%. This is a record high performance in comparison to other UV LED technology. And also we propose a platform that so-called silicon carbide platform to integrate those UV devices, UV LED, UV lasers, and photo detectors, as well as uh, hemp structures, electronic devices to control the light uh, propagation and so on. So uh, in the, also by using the aluminum gallium nitride technology, we propose a Grinch uh, configurations. Basically we use a Grinch graded aluminum gallium nitride technology to create a, a light emitting uh, device, but we eventually wanted to make a laser diode out of the green structures. And here is the, through the optical pumping, we get the net model gain very high to 80 uh, percent meter. And also we demonstrated a green diode based on this structure. And this is the promising structure for us to develop a deep UV laser diode. And the last type, last section, I will shortly introduce our newly developed technology based on the photo electrochemical type of photo detector. The solid state device, we always wanted to convert light into electric signals. So we use many kinds of wide band gap semiconductors. And for using the MB uh, to grow the nanowires, the nanowire naturally has a very surface to uh, volume ratio, can absorb more light. So what we wanted to do is we learn from the gamma natural nanowire, they can be used for photoelectrical chemical application due to their chemical stability and the tunable band gaps. And we wanted to use this nanowire to photo detect as well. Basically, we wanted to put this nanowire into a, a electrolyte and through the electrical chemical stations to absorb, uh, to perform like a, a photo detector. And through the introduction of the HER, so-called hydrogen uh, reaction, and also the uh, 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 through the chemical reaction to generate uh, hydrogen and oxygen. And uh, typically in a pin junction, we always uh, follow the unidirectional current or rectification behavior. Recently, we published an article, we can create a bidirectional photo current in a pin junction, hydro junctions. Uh, basically, we leverage the opportunity that by putting a semiconductor in the electrolyte condition and the semiconductor and electrolyte, the, the band bending will push the electron holes depend on the N type and the P type. They will form different type of band bending. As a result, when we create the pin junction like this way, we will be able to differentiate the light. If we, uh, for 250 nanometer, we absorb the light both in the uh, P-type and N-type material. But if we introduce 360 nanometers, the only light can be absorbed is from the mm, gamma nitride. So uh, what's the principle behind it? With uh, through the 250 nanometers, the hydrogen evolution reaction dominates the whole uh, reaction, and as a result, uh, we're leading into the negative photocurrent. And in the another way is we use 360 nanometers, the oxygen evolution reaction dominates. As a result, we create a positive photocurrent. Through the optimization of the surface energy, we decorate the nanowires with the uh, PT platin, and we will be able to reduce the barriers for the energy to transfer. As a result, the surface energy can be uh, uh, reduced. And uh, eventually, under 240, 54 nanometer, we create a negative uh, responsivity, and under 360 nanometer, we create a positive uh, negative uh, responsivity. And, uh, I would like to conclude my talk here is uh, we introduced two types of UV optoelectronics. One is a light emitting device, including laser diode as well as LEDs. And also we introduced uh, photo electrical type uh, photo detectors. And the key is how we are able, able to generate the carriers for those kind of light emitting devices. And for the uh, photo detectors, we how to control the carrier transport and control. And uh, our goal is to use the material growth by the MBB or MOCVD or we have to control the device fabrication carefully to optimize device performance. That's all. Thank you very much for your attention.